what is up guys this is kobe here and welcome to part two of my six job review now this video is a month late uh ideally i was supposed to get out my thoughts on how i felt about six job during the tespia update for it the week before six job actually came out because that's when they kind of finalized some things before having to go live but um was busy around that time and then when six job went live i was just so highly focused on actually grinding my character instead i think the last time i even remotely showcased this character on this channel i had an entire like level less of exp like was well, maybe around like 281 30 percent now i'm 282 30 percent like i'm trying to i'm trying to get my skills i'm trying to level up trying to grind i need to hit 285 so you already know how it goes and of course i have not found the proper balance between being able to grind and do my boss's stream make videos and all that so my sincerest apologies anyway i think the video is better this way or it's better that i do it this way because now that i actually had a, a good amount of time to experience six job i can talk more in detail about things and what you would expect for the grind on uh, maxing out your six shop skills and uh, what you'll probably be getting out of it so i'm going to be addressing the first thing okay first things first the origin skill in the last video i talked about how this skill felt horrible to use i think this might have been one of the worst skills to use honestly because one i felt like if your ping was too high the skill would not properly go off and you have to press it a few times for it to properly go off and yeah it just wouldn't immediately go off it felt terrible i hated it so much but now i am here to announce that it does not do that anymore i'm going to tap the button tap it now i go into dead space immediately no problems i am so glad that they fixed this also having experienced a couple of full party bosses with it has some really interesting as well the two main bosses that i've done on my dark knight in full parties are kalos and uh, I've been doing a little bit of cowling practice since we have so much authentic force, but our damage for it might be there. It might not be quite there yet, but we are still just kind of practicing. We haven't got we haven't gotten out of phase one in no mode yet. Uh, we got super close in one of our runs, but it didn't actually make it work. Uh, so I guess I, I could be uploading some cowling progress as well. But we're also getting the new boss difficulties coming up here very soon. So I could upload like easy cowling content as well. So this is, this is going to be cowling content on this channel here real soon. But because of how it is with the two bosses we are currently facing, Kalos and Kaling, um, we cannot be using our skills at the same time um, in a like party setting. Because I think the big thing with that at the moment is that, um, well, one, we would do way too, too much damage in Kalos. Um, we legit do segments every two minutes without guild skills. And, like, we, we legitimately make ourselves weaker to be able to kill Kalos properly because of how the tests work. So, between tests, it's like, okay, this guy will origin. For example, as soon as we enter phase two, two of us will origin. And then the others will just use the regular burst and wait a couple minutes. And then we'll go ahead and go to 2-2. Two, two, and then at 2-2, two, two, a couple more people origin. 2-3, a couple more people origin. And then at 2-4 to finish the fight, um, I use my origin again because six minutes will have passed by then and then the boss will be cleared so for callus it's really just a matter of like um not really using the skill at the same time but more about who is going to use the skill at this time to be able to make it work also you kind of want to use your skill a little later in the groggy so he does get that absolute bind uh that can also be stacked on top of regular bind so like maybe 10 seconds of the grog you can absolute bind and then he'll be bound for 10 seconds and then you can regular bind he'll be bound for another 10 seconds all that stuff there are definitely some occasions where you want to be using your origin skill all, all six of you want to be using your origin skill full party full burst all that stuff uh for example we even tried to do extreme black mage as well and um while that did not go very well, we all used our origin skill at the same time to get like the biggest burst possible just so we can get out of P1 as fast as we could. But unfortunately, we are a bit too weak for Extreme Black Mage, so it, this might be a while. So they removed the party cooldown, but I think it's still kind of cool that um, like there are still sort of like different ways to be able to manage how you use your origin skill. I didn't even mention how you use it in Kaling. Pretty much in Kaling and P1, you are split between three different um or you fight three different perils, two people each. Uh especially if you both play like three-minute classes, what 
what you could do is you could rotate origin skills to get the bind off because it is an absolute bind that works on every boss you cannot bind the perils with regular bind but you could bind them with absolute bind so when it is time for time to burst for both users one of them will use the origin skill during that three minute burst and then y'all just go back and forth and back and forth but i feel like as you guys are about to approach the end of p1 everybody wants to have their origin skill up to do the massive burst in p2 if the damage needed from the origin skills is necessary but let's talk about the actual process um when the second part of kmst came out before six shop actually went live when you job advanced you got nothing they gave you nothing you hit six job just to get absolute fuck yeah and in <laughs> If you wanted your origin skill at level one, you had to pay a very large fee of five sword and 100 sword of fragments. I guess I haven't really gotten to what this even means at the moment, but I will just say if you are a fresh 260, especially, it would take you a very long time just to be able to get those resources. It's really bad. I've compiled like a whole list of um, the rates that you'd be expected to get for both sword and uh soul order fragments so i'll be talking about that in a minute but um when this update did go live they're like okay we're going to ease up the process a little bit by giving you your origin skill for free well we better have gotten it for free uh we do not get the master core for free currently but i hope that later down the road in future updates even after they do release more mastery cores i genuinely hope they do give us the free mastery cores as well and then for enhancement cores which are cores that just boost your fit job skills um we don't have to get those for free. We, we can just go ahead and level those up the way they want us to. Uh, I think that's perfectly fine. Because unlike in um, Mastery Cores, these aren't skills that actually change a lot in appearance. Um, and I think it's like... I, I think you definitely should get these Mastery Cores for free. Just because not only is it a change in appearance, but it's also a pretty drastic change in um, the skills damage as well. And for a lot of classes, leveling the Mastery Core is like the way to go like as you can see i have level 14 on gungnir and everything else is between level 1 4 and 7 so it's like nah and i'm still leveling this up like crazy at the moment too just because but uh while i have the exit side open let me actually talk more about the soul order stuff so this is soul order in order to get soul order you need to collect 1000 soul order energy how do you get soul order energy Sword of Energy comes from any monster in Grandis level 260 plus. So they will drop either these little balls. Let me go ahead and open the maple guy for you. Uh, but if I click on Arteria over here, this is energy right here. This is a small energy. You'll see these a little often when you grind. Uh, every time you do one of these, you get 10 energy. And as I've said before, in order to get one full sword, uh, you need 1000 energy. Uh, on a rare occasion, they will also drop these big energies here, and these give 200. It's a very good feeling when you get these, at least for me. Not really much for Reboot, and I'll talk about why here in a second, but I do love it when I see these 200 Sword of Energies. It's very nice. Yeah, that is Sword of Energy, which goes into Sword of, which is one of the two currencies necessary to upgrade your 6-shop skills. And then here is Sword of Fragments. These are the tradable items in Rec Server. Sword of Energy is currently untradable. Uh, soon to be a pay to win source in the cash shop for 9.9k in Nexus to get one with a limit of five per month. Which is pretty interesting that they're already doing that, but it is what it is. Um, but Sword of Fragments on Rec Server, fully tradable. Reboots completely untradable, not even through your storage. The ones you get on your character is the ones that you stick with. You cannot put them on anybody else, and that is it. But this is the other material that you'll be using to level to level up six job skills. To unlock your mastery core, level one, it will cost you about three sword of energy and 50 sword of fragments. And to unlock level one of any of your enhancement cores, it will cost four sword of energy and 75 or four sword of and then 75 sword of fragments. Once you hit this level one upgrade, it will be a pretty cheap cost on both energy and fragments going forward. Up until level 9. 9 to 10, 19 to 20, and 29 to 30 for everything all have massive cost jumps. I'm not really sure why they do that, but I guess that's just 
because how it is uh they had updated it after it went live to where you would see a massive final damage boost in your enhancement cores and then some other benefits on the origin skill as well the benefits for reaching 10 20 and 30 on the origin skill include 20 ied for level 10 20 boss for reaching level 20 and uh, 30 ied and 30 boss for reaching level 30 so it's pretty nice boost Damage increase all across the board though is the same for every level if you want to talk about like the actual skill numbers itself. One of the greatest things they did in this update that pleased everybody was the fact that um in the test server before Six Job got released, level 1 of an enhancement core for your 5th job skills for most classes or for just damaging skills in general would only increase the skills final damage by 2%. That was not that big of an increase at all for the massive price that you had to pay to unlock it it was two percent per level all the way to level 30. when this went live they completely changed that and instead of getting two percent final damage at a level at level one you get 11 percent final damage at level one which is absolutely massive but in order to adjust this you do get less final damage per level until you hit level 10 20 and 30. so how the old way worked was like I said, 2% FD per level up until 60 FD at level 30. The new way is 11 FD at level 1 plus 1 FD per level, so 19 FD at level 9. Level 10 would jump from 19 to 25 and then plus 1 FD per level after that, so level 19 would be 34%. Jumping from 19 to 20, you would go from 34 to 40% final damage and then it would go back to being... Um, 1 FD per level up until level 29, so you would be at 20 or 49% at level 29, and then at level 30, it jumps from 49 to 60. So 29 to 30 is very huge on these enhancement cores. For the classes that got skills that don't really do much damage at all, um, they have added some additional effects to those, but of course, I'm not going to be talking too much about those, um, because I don't really know the details on all of them, so that's something you can look up on orangemushroom.net six shop post, I'll put the link in the description for that, just to see the numbers for your class if you want. So, the main question that people are wondering, how long does it take to get the six shop skills done? Well... Depending on how much drop rate you have, yes, drop rate does matter. I have compiled a list on the hours that you are to expect. Um, I think with this, this is this is not like a hundred percent accurate. Uh, I don't think there is way too much information for the data that I pulled, but I think it is somewhat close. Obviously, it could be more hours, it could be less hours, but. For the rates that I have seen so far, at least in my scenario while grinding, I feel like this is a pretty good fit. So, on the road to maxing out your six shop skills, like I have mentioned here, to be one to one with maxing out six shop skills, you must collect one sword, so a thousand sword energy per 28 fragments. And here in parentheses, I put not possible because this will literally not be consistent ever. I didn't actually write it down, but I'll go ahead and write it right now. But in order to max out all 30 or all your six shop skills, level 30 everything, um, not even including hexa stats, which I haven't even got into, but I'll talk about that after I finish this. Um, you need 714. Actually, wait, it's down below. It's, it's literally right there. Uh, it's 714 sword, which is 714,000 sword energy to max out six shop skills, and 20,184 sword fragments to max out your six shop skills as well. So, this is where it gets a little weird. Um, Rex server. You can buy sword of fragments. So if you plan to buy sword of fragments, then you could use the money that you get from grinding and I guess from other resources if you want to be able to just purchase them from the auction house. And then um, reboots, you can't buy sword of fragments. So there's going to be occasions playing reboots where you will literally have maxed out energy. As you saw, it caps out at 20. After it hits 20, you cannot collect any more energy. But you might have so instances where you have maxed out energy can't get energy anymore and you have no fragments they're gone you, you gotta keep getting the fragments to get enough to level up whatever skill you're working on at that moment also um there are skill builds for jobs i want to say by the way 
uh infant has a lot of skill builds for a lot of jobs i think the biggest issue with these skill builds though is that they follow the formula that is best suited for energy because so many people on kms play rec server instead of reboots that not a lot of classes i feel like have the um skill build that is best used for your fragments like fragments of fd gain versus you know energy tfd gain uh you want to go the energy efficient route on reg for the most part while well, you want to go for the fragment efficient route on reboots but as i've mentioned i don't think i've seen too many fragments efficient guides at all which is very unfortunate so let's say dude enter stadium right you know level 260 just hit six shop also by the way these items don't start dropping until after you reach six shop uh until you are six shop the grandest mobs will drop absolutely nothing just keep that in mind um so dude it hits 260 gets six job really excited star farmer for his mass three core but the problem is he has no drop rate fresh 260 going at the stardium those mobs have four billion health that is way too much health for any fresh 260 to be able to handle for quite a while but he still wants to train there anyway so it's like okay whatever uh so let's say this guy is decently strong and he goes to like library one or library four and he is pulling um he is pulling 12 to 13k an hour or something like that. But he has no drop rate. He mainly maybe just wants EXP to level up. Or maybe he's also wearing Mesa gear to get some Mesa as well. But he can still afford to be able to pull 12 to 13k per hour with that rate. Uh, if this was the case, I don't know why he wouldn't be using decent HS. But let's just say he was just at zero entirely. Uh, he would probably be getting 3.5 fragments per hour. And as I've said, it takes 50 fragments to unlock your mastery core. Uh, so he's going to be grinding for like 14 to 15 hours just to be able to get enough fragments to unlock his mastery core. That poor little guy. And then I haven't even gotten to the energy cost as well, but I'm pretty sure he would get three energy before he would even be able to get the fragments as well. Uh, also, energy goes in bosses. I never brought that up, but it, it comes in bosses. Uh, here, here's a fixed amount that I'm gonna put on the screen. I'll also put it in the description as well. Uh, that's really all you have to know. It is an instant drop, of course, so uh, just uh, keep that in mind. But as you see, roughly one sword of energy per 54 kills. But monsters don't drop one energy at a time. They either they either drop those 10 energy balls or those 200 energy balls. But this is like an average, so. It's like oh man what am i gonna see a 10 energy ball it's gonna take you 540 kills before you see your first one on a an average expected kill rate so it it will take a while i'm going to go out of a whim and say people don't start pulling like exceptionally good kill rates in grandis and so at least level 270 after new age you got cernium and burnium that you can go to right off the bat at 260 but you're weak so your cure rate's gonna be trash i would still try to say to get as much job gear as you possibly can and enter i think most people even with job gear with like the full map skills that they might be able to use a grind they could go to library and still pull those 12 to 13k per hour rates so like that's cool let's say you get yourself some job gear you pop a wealth pot you got hs you're on a job coupon so you're like high you're good uh, so you have 200 job rate for that. Um, you'll probably be seeing maybe like 10 to 11 fragments per hour once you start doing your kills in Cernium, which is a lot better than the initial scenario. Uh, the amount of time it would take for you to get your mastery core would go down from like 11 hours or I'm sorry, 14 hours to five hours, which is a lot better. But in general, your kill rate is still not all that good. Uh, at 265, you unlock Hotel Arcs. Uh, there, I mean, there are also some really big maps in Sardim and Burnium, but it's just, it's such a low level, and I don't expect people to be strong enough to actually clear those maps at lower levels, but let's just go ahead and say at 265, you unlock Hotel Arcs, you get your second authentic symbol, and um, you have enough force, and apparently you've gathered yourself enough damage to be able to grind some of the bigger maps in either Sardim or Burnium, so you start pulling, like, 16k an hour not necessarily the most yet but you start pulling 60k an hour i don't expect this to happen for everybody by the way i was struggling on my buck i didn't get to pull rates beyond 15k per hour until 275 speaking from personal experience but let's just say 265 dude is pulling 16k an hour same drop rate and everything uh his fragment rate will be um judging by this number here it should be moving up to 
I want to say like 13 to 14 per hour at 200 job, which is a lot better. Again, mostly speaking in the reboot scenario, so I'm not really going over the energy because you will just eventually get the energy anyway. Um, you're way more gated by the fragments as I have mentioned before, so we're just going to mostly be going off of the fragments. Um, and let's go ahead and say, like, okay, you're somewhere between 270, here it is at least 270, they're really strong, they can do Odium, or maybe some dude who's 275, they're also really strong, they can do Shangri-La maps, there's a lot of really easy maps in Shangri-La by the way, so they're pulling 18k an hour now, and they're up good. A lot of these raids I determined for like the full hours needed to max out, I determined them at like 18k kills per hour, which takes nearly full clearing some of the highest spawn maps in all of Grandis, which is something that you don't really get to see yourself doing until like the mid to late 270s at least in my opinion. So at 200 drop rate, that guy be pulling about 15 fragments per hour. And if they get full drop gear, they get really strong, um, they'll be able to pull about 20 fragments per hour, which is really good. So yeah, there is a bit of progression to how many fragments per hour you'll be able to get because you're going to be pulling garbage kill rate when you first enter. You're not going to have a lot of drop rate. Your kill is going to be trash. So um, I would maybe if not primarily, I would at least prioritize drop gear on the side because getting these skills leveled up is going to be extremely important. So as I mentioned here earlier, 714 Sorda, aka 714,000 energy to max out your 6 shop skills. And then you're going to need 20,184 Sorda fragments to max out your 6 shop skills as well. So, let's go ahead and talk about how many mobs you're going to be able to be killing, or you're going to need to kill in both Reg and Reboot. Reg will always have the assumption that you can buy fragments, will be buying the missing fragments that you did not get from killing mobs. Um, in order to max out 6 shop on reg, 300 drop rate fully, you are expected to kill about 9.6 million mobs. Um, this will take about 193 hours of grinding on GMS reg if you are getting frenzy for every minute of that hour, estimating 50k kills per hour. Now me, I'm not a frenzy genius, right? I, I, I'm like, not necessarily too big on that, but what I will say is, um, the rates differ a lot. I think 50k might be on the higher end, but you might be able to really figure out how many hours it will take depending on what kill rate you get yourself if you are a GMS work player that can actively farm with the Frenzy, so that is something that you will be able to do the math on. And then of course if you're grinding a base spawn on GMS reg, which should just be the same as KMS as well, uh, it would take you about 536 hours base spawn, estimating 18k kills per hour, which again, as I've mentioned, isn't really a kill rate that a lot of people start pulling until level 275 plus. Now for reboot, where you cannot buy any of your fragments at all whatsoever, the mob count will nearly double. It will nearly double and you need to kill 18.1 million mobs with this much drop rate on average. Again, could be more, could be less. And it would take you maybe about 1,008 hours of grinding on reboot, estimating 18k kills per hour to max out 6 job. I get reboot is the grinding server, but goddamn, that is a lot of hours. And as, as mentioned before, none of these numbers include doing your hexastat, which is actually a pretty good thing to do. Maybe not very early on, but somewhere early to midway to doing your 6 job, even on reboots. You can just go ahead and get a core to level 20, but when it comes to min-maxing the stats on that core, you do not touch that again until you are completely done with your 6 job skills. And then lastly on this list, I've already covered this here, but... We have the three types of cores, skill core, mastery core, enhancement core, and then we have the big boost for skill cores and enhancement cores. And remember, this the skill core origin skill big boost is just the IED boss damage and then the IED and boss damage at their respective levels. And then enhancement cores just get way more FD at level 1, 10, 20, and 30, and there are no big boosts on mastery cores. And again, because of these massive costs going to level 10, 20, and 30, because Master Quests have no big boost, level 29 to 30, so that's level 29 is something that you end up getting on your Master Core pretty early on for a lot of jobs. Uh, at least that is the sole Erda efficient way 
of doing it. The Fragment Efficient Way, I'm not really too sure just yet. And also, it differs between classes. It highly differs between classes. Um, but for the most part, level 29 to 30 is highly inefficient for a very long time. Just because of its massive cost with very little gain. So that is the info that I have gathered for Six Job. I uh, hope you guys are ready to grind when this thing arrives because, yeah. And like I mentioned earlier, you gotta do all that to max out Six Job, but they don't want you to be done just yet. No, we got a Hexastat. I rolled probably one of the worst combinations of a Hexastat board you could ever get. I think the main saving grace of this board that I have right now is the fact that I have level 10 on a, on a substat. There are a total of six Hexastat cores for Six Job, but currently, just to keep things fresh, you can only get one right now. Not sure when they'll add the other five, but maybe later down the road they'll, they'll do it. There are six different stats you can get for Hexastat. You can get flat stat, crit damage, attack, regular damage, boss damage, and IED. Uh, I will put up the amount of stat that you get per level on the screen and how the, uh, the main stat will work as well. But I'll also just go ahead and talk about the main set as well. So for example, for attack, it's 5 per level. Simple. Level 10, 50. 5, 10, 50, 20, 25, 30, you do the rest. Uh, for main stat, it's going to work in a different way. So level 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be 1x. So it will be 20 attack at level 4. But as soon as you start getting level 5, 6, and 7, it's going to be 2x. So it will be 20 here, but level 5 will be 30 attack on the main stat. Level 6 will be 40. Level 7 will be 50. When you start getting level 8 and 9, it will triple. So you're at 50 attack at level 7, which is the same as a level 10 substat. But at level 8, it will be up to 65. And at level 9, it will be up to 80. At the level 10, the value will quadruple, going all the way from 80 to 100. So the total value of the stat on the main stat at level 10 will be doubled compared to what you could pull on any of your substats. So here are some rules with Hexastat cores and rules going forward whenever they do release more slots. Uh, rule number one, you cannot duplicate the same main stat core. So I have strength as a main stat right now, and whenever the game releases more Hexastat cores, you cannot have strength as a main stat again. It would have to be literally anything else except for strength. Um, rule number two. What the hell is rule number two? All right, all right. A, a single stat core cannot have multiple of the same stat. So you cannot have attack, attack, attack on a stat core. That's not allowed. And then rule number three. While you, are, while you cannot have the same main stat more than once, you also cannot have the additional stat on cores appear more than twice across the six cores that we will eventually get. So I have 50 attack on here, which means that I have one more core that I could use attack on for a substat, but then after that, I would never be able to use attack on a substat again. So even the less desirable stats like IED and damage, you are eventually going to have to use anyway. The game will literally make you choose one main stat and two substats of each hexa stat that there is, or each type of stat that you can get. There are ways that it can be optimized though. Um, a very low level main stat core is actually considered very lucky because it is future proof for something that you could use later on. For example, IED, uh, like who, who the hell? You could get level one on a main stat core and you could be crying and weeping and sobbing about it but it's like wait a second this is a really good future core and then you can even rearrange the stats to anything you want in whatever specific order you want at a small price of 100 mil you can also save them uh at level 20 if you want to roll again and you end up getting something worse that you don't really like but you have to be level 20 on a hexastat hexa core to be able to save it at level 10 you can reset it if you don't like what you're getting so far after level 10, you can reset it, and I believe it costs like 10 modes to reset, and you can just go again. Yeah, no. Hexastat cores, the main stat at least, you are considered lucky if you get a super low level or a super high level. Somewhere in the middle for me, like level 4 or 5, is not good. You do not want a main stat core to be at this level, but because it is way too expensive to upgrade right now and it's still kind of like easy damage anyway, I'm probably going to be keeping this core for a very long time before I change it up. But let's go ahead and talk about the most important thing, the cost of Sword and Sword of Fragments. 
Unlocking your initial Hexacore will cost you 5 Sword Art and 10 Sword Art Fragments. This is the only time you have to pay with Sword Art, and then for leveling up any of the skill levels, you just have to pay Fragments. The amount of Fragments you have to spend afterwards will depend on the level of your main stat. It's going to increase depending on what level your main stat is. Uh, also, the main stat starts at a pretty high percentage, but it goes down quite a bit later on. Until your main stat reaches level 3, you have a 35% chance of getting a level on your main stat. The additional stats will be 32.5 for each one. So while you are below level 3, it's going to cost you only 10 fragments per level. Once your main stat reaches level 3, the success chance of hit leveling main stat will reduce to 20% up until level 7. And while that is the case, this will be 20 and then these two will be 40, you have to pay 20 sword of fragments per level. If you reach level 7, that's when it starts getting a bit expensive. It's 15% on the main stat to hit level 8. The other additional stats are distributed frequently between the remaining rates and it will cost you 30. Level 9, 8 to 9 will cost you 40 fragments at a 10% chance of reaching level 9. And then level 10 will cost you 50 fragments per level at a 5% chance of reaching level 10. Level 10 is extremely difficult to reach and I don't think I would advise anyone on reboot at least to go for it at all i mean for a very long time as i've mentioned you can keep a bad hex stat core like this for a while um there's really no real reason to reset it and go for any other levels until they give you a purpose to once they release the remaining core slots but that's really about it but uh i hope i've gone over a lot of detail about six job it is a lot to take in it is a lot of grind uh, it's kind of a weird jump in the game though, because I felt like they made this game really freaking casual up until 260, especially with the 260 hyper burn, the massive amount of EXP you get from dailies, and the reduced EXP required to level up to 260. It's like insane. You, you just stroll to level 260, and then as soon as you get six job, you just hit with this. Oh, you need to grind so goddamn much. Like, I get the game is grinding all, but. Yeah, the massive jump in grinding for this system at the moment is absolutely unreal. Like, it's insane. I was very excited and motivated to be able to grind again. Not only because I could see myself getting crazy big realistic gains after a very long time of not being able to get gains like this. But also because I just want to hit 285 for Carcion as well, right? Which, speaking of, the Tesla server came out for it before I made this video. Absolutely gorgeous area. I want to hit 285 so bad now. You already know how it is. But, um... Other than that, it's like some people will see this grind and be like, oh, this sucks. Like, this is way too many hours. I don't want to do it. But other people also see this grind like, oh, my goodness, I'm finally going to be able to make gains again after spending 50 bill plus failing to get my top from 30% to 33% main stat. And like, it, it will just feel great to get easy gains again after a very long time and not being able to get easy gains. So it's really cool. You can see it however way you want to see it, I suppose. It highly differs between each player's opinions. And honestly, every single opinion that people have about the system is justified. Uh, the grind is ridiculous, but at the same time, you can see the in-game players being happy to grind it out because they'll get to make big gains again, and that's really just how it is. Before I end off this video, though, I wanted to go ahead and show off one of my big accomplishments I've, did, I've done on this character after Six Shop, and plus, I haven't really shown Dark Knight Bosk in a very long time. I soloed Hard Saren. I'm actually three Hard Saren clears in at the moment, solo-wise. Um, the first clear was a little scuffed, so I didn't really upload that. I really like the second clear, so I'll be showing off my second Hard Saren clear that I've done instead of the first. Um, and then my third clear was also pretty scuffed, but I also didn't even record or stream the actual clear for that this week, so it's whatever. Um, but as you can see, my character has gotten pretty decently strong with just clean buffs and whatnot, and I am almost 70k strength. Um, my stat converter tells me that I am about 72k converted stat, which gives me a relatively decent number for Heart Saren of like 90 something percent. I don't really remember the exact value, but. It also doesn't take into account six shop skills in the stack of already yet, so it's actually a pretty comfy hard saying clear now, thanks to six shop. If I didn't have six shop, I think it would still be possible, but like extremely perfect play, bare minimum, no mistakes, I would not want to do it. It sounds like it's very awful to do. 
but it's all good i'm just happy that i'm soloing sarah now the boss pisses me off still because i'm still failing it a few times a week just because of how annoying it is with like fmas and stuff uh things that you have a bad playing bad ping player i suppose but it is what it is you know i'm just trying to get my emblem i have my hopes up every week and hopefully one day i'll get it but that's gonna be it for this video hope you guys learned a thing or two about six job i appreciate y'all watching and i will see you guys in the next video ケアクテンシン。모든 것을 집어 삼켜라. 이 차례는 폭풍 같은 힘으로 이걸 끝이다. 받을 수 있겠나? 자! 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 두려워하라. 음, 음. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 두려워하라. 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 네 차례다. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 자! 계약된 힘. 지금 받겠다. 받을 수 있겠나? 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 받을 수 있겠나? 트랏! 흔적도 남기지 않겠다. 이걸 끝이다. 트랏! 트랏! 꽤 뚫어주마. 
두려워하라. 받을 수 있겠나? 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 받을 수 있겠나? 받을 수 있겠나? 느껴지는 것 더욱 강한 힘이 즉 꿰뚫어줘 받을 수 있겠나? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 꿰뚫어주마. 너의 진짜 힘을 보였다. 받을 수 있겠나? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 너의 진짜 힘을 보였다. 계약된 힘 지금 받겠다 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다 피할 수 없을 것이다 두려워하라. 꿰뚫어주마. 지금이다. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 꿰뚫어주마. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 어둠의 힘이 함께한다. 꿰뚫어줘. 받을 수 있겠나? 응? 응. 꿰뚫어줘. 없을 것이다. 받을 수 있겠나? 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다 피할 수 없을 것이다. 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 두려워하라. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 받을 수 있겠나? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 힘을 빌려주겠나? 네 차례다. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 느껴지는 것. 더욱 강한 힘이. 음? 받을 수 있겠나? 
받을 수 있겠나? 폭풍 같은 힘으로 이걸 끝이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 두려워하라. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 꿰뚫어주마. 날 뛰어라. 들려드리죠. 나의 자 피할 수 없을 것이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 자. 두려워하라. 네 차례다. 두려워하라. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다 두려워하라. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 두려워하라. 꿰뚫어주마. 지금이다. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다 꿰뚫어주마. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 받을 수 있겠나? 지금이다. 두려워하라. 받을 수 있겠나? 지금이다. 자! 받을 수 있겠나? 빌려주겠나? 네 차례다. 꿰뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 자! 피할 수 없을 것이다. 꿰뚫어주마. 자! 어둠의 힘이 함께한다. 모든 것을 집어삼켜라! 꿰뚫어주마! 당신이 심판하겠어. 이걸 끝이다! 꿰뚫어주마! 쭉! 두려워하라. 받을 수 있겠나? 네 차례다. 꿰뚫어주마. 지금이다. 음? 받을 수 있겠나? 자, 받을 수 있겠나? 자, 지금이다. 뚫어주마. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 자, 꽤 뚫어주마. 자, 음? 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 꽤 뚫어주마. 
네 차례다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 마음껏 날 뛰어라 두려워하라. 차! 차! 두려워하라. 꽤 뚫어주마. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 계약된 힘. 지금 받겠다. 두려워하라. 꽤 뚫어주마. 느껴지는군. 더욱 강한 힘이. 쭉. 자. 폭풍 같은 힘으로 마지막이다. 어둠의 이름 안에 하나로 받을 수 있겠나? 꽤 뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 지금이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 음? 느껴지는군. 더욱 강한 힘이. 꽤 뚫어주마. 지금이다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 받을 수 있겠나? 자! 받을 수 있겠나? 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 꽤 뚫어주마. 자! 계약된 힘. 지금 받겠다. 네 차례다. 자! 두려워하라. 어둠의 힘이 함께한다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 흔적도 남기지 않겠다. 이건 끝이다. 음? 음? 겁도 없군. 우리 가. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 꽤 뚫어주마. 꽤 뚫어주마. 네 차례다. 
지옥에 뚫어줘. 네 차례다. 전. 네 차례다. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 네 차례다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 어둠의 힘이 함께한다. 전. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 받을 수 있겠나? 지금이다. 응? 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 응? 받을 수 있겠나? 지금이다. 응? 꽤 뚫어주마. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 응? 받을 수 있겠나? 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 두려워하라. 차라! 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 힘을 빌려주겠나? 차라! 네 차례다. 없을 것이다. 전. 응? 느껴지는 것. 더욱 강한 힘이. 도와주겠나? 우리의 계약대로. 꽤 뚫어주마. 마지막이다. 모든 것을 집어 삼켜라. 지금 받을 수 있겠나? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 받을 수 있겠나? 응? 받을 수 있겠나? 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다. 네 차례다. 차! 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 받을 수 있겠나? 꽤 뚫어주마. 네 차례다. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 꽤 뚫어주마. 두려워하라. 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 피할 수 없을 것이다. 지금이다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 네 차례다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 차라! 지금이다. 마음껏 날 뛰어라. 두려워하라. 
피할 수 없을 것이다. 없을 것이다. 두려워하라. 전 피할 수 없을 것이다. 지금이다. 꽤 뚫어줘. 두려워하라. 네 차례다. 받을 수 있겠나? 차! 네 차례다. 꽤 뚫어주마. 지금이다. 두려워하라. 너의 진짜 힘을 보여다 음? 받을 수 있겠나? 적인 힘 앞에 무의네 차례다. 마지막이다. 차! 음? 지금이다. 음? 피할 수 없을 것이다. 꿰뚫어줘. 